All right, let's uh, draw this all together now. Al Jazeera senior political analyst Marwan Bashara joins me. So, Marwan, uh, Blinken doing the rounds again in the region. A UN resolution presented at UNHQ from the US. What's happening? You know, I got a feeling because I've been listening to our reporting from this morning uh, about the UN Security Council on resolutions and so on and so forth. I think we're probably going to see whatever happens in New York at the UN depending on what happens in Cairo or what happens in the region, meaning the United States is not going to approve any UN Security Council that is game changer unless something gives in the region. And in that sense, the meeting between the six Arab foreign minister and Blinken in Cairo could, could be a breakthrough. We don't know yet, because certainly uh, the Arab countries uh, there representing the Arab countries in general are presenting a consensus, a common vision of how the Arab world sees the day after. From the day before through uh, the future of Israel-Palestine, meaning there's a bit of a roadmap with very specific guidelines and very specific steps and requirements about what needs to be done and who should do what in terms of Israel, the Palestinians, the United States, the European Union, and the Arab world. Moving forward, from establishing a ceasefire to Israeli withdrawal from Gaza, freezing of the settlements, to uh, the extension of the Palestinian Authority into Gaza, the proliferation of Israeli of Palestinian security forces, onto an international peace conference with a UN Security Council resolution recognizing Palestine, allowing for the United States to recognize Palestine, and so on and so forth. Do you think it's been hammered down to that sort of detail? We've been trying for decades to get this sort of detail. You hammered know, out. Do you think we're at that point? I think, I think uh, after three meetings of those six foreign ministers of the past five months, they have reached some sort of a, a concept paper, some kind of a, a vision, some kind of a roadmap. Now, what's really interesting about it mm. is probably our viewers around the world will not remember. You're too young to remember that, uh, too. I wish. But right after 1967 war, there was the infamous or the famous Arab no's, three no's. No to negotiations with Israel, no to recognition of Israel, no to peace with Israel. Right? Since then, basically, the Arabs have been trying to walk it back. But today, the Arab world is offering peace, negotiation, and recognition of Israel, in addition to security guarantees. Right. But th this Arab blueprint, if you will, Will Blinken buy it? Will the U.S. buy it? I think it's the closest thing that we've seen an American position to an Arab position. Because if you remember, some two decades ago, there was the Arab Peace Initiative. That Arab Peace Initiative became part of the George Bush famous roadmap for peace. Well, today, on the basis of that Arab Peace Initiative, led by Saudi Arabia, we are, we're getting closer with an American position that says the day after, there should be no Israeli occupation of Gaza. There should be two-state solution, and there should be some sort of a regional security structure that guarantees the security of both Israel and Palestine. The Arabs are offering that today. They are offering that with detailed roadmap that says the United States needs to do the following, we, the Arabs, need to do the following, and the Palestinians and the Israelis need to do, you know, a number of things. So, in a sense, we will see what the American response is. But you can say that we're certainly at a moment now where there is a closer um, common view, if you will, between Washington and various Arab capitals. The, the, the hiccup, well, actually, it's more than a hiccup. The, the, the main obstacle is, of course, the Netanyahu government. Right, it's Israel. Right, OK. But, you know, when you, when you listen to the democratic leadership in the Senate, when you listen to mm -hmm. the, the democratic administration, Biden, Blinken, and so on and so forth, you can tell that there is a bit of attention on this sort of issue, right? So the United States is asking Israel not to invade Gaza, uh, not to invade Rafah in the southern part of Gaza, because that could lead to the, uh, to the you know, dramatization of the ongoing genocide, right? Because that will probably explode any Arab peace initiative that the Arabs are putting on the table today. I mean, a major earthquake type of an invasion of Rafah, where 1.8 million Palestinians are taking refuge, would be a major blow to 
any potential peace initiative or to any potential way into a future of some kind of a coexistence in the region. So the Arabs are presenting something. It is of an interest. I think probably Blinken will be listening, you know, with full ears, and we will see what happens after that. So many questions I have for you, Mohan, but we've run out of time. We'll have to take them on in the coming hours. But for the time being, thanks very much, Mohan Bashar. Thank you.